Well, hello to my second video about UFO 2000. The first one was about setting up UFO 2000 on a Windows 10. This one is about doing the same on Linux. I'm using Ubuntu as a distribution, but you can use any distribution you want. But some things may be a little bit different for you then. First, a little bit about UFO 2000. What is this? This is a tactical game inspired by the original XCOM games where you have round-based tactical games. Problem always was that you had only a chance to play against the AI. You were never able to play against human players and UFO 2000 kind of fixed this, this problem. You can play against humans, but only humans, so there is no AI involved. You can do this online on a server or you can do it hot seat if you want to play against your opponent on the same computer. And for Linux there are some differences. On the Windows you just install it and well you could look up the rest in my other video. But on the, under Linux you only have the source code and have to compile it yourself. You need the source code, you need to compile it and copy a few files and, and so on and I'm going to show you what is involved. First of all, um, you need some libraries. Not every library you need is already installed and on a Ubuntu Linux and in principle it's these libraries. It's quite a list but it's very fastly installed. I will not do this because I already have done this before. I don't want to show you that this part. You only need to enter this line you need subversion, you need the build essentials and some other libraries which again uses. That's the part just for the game. UFO 2000 also brings its own server. If you want to put up a server you could also compile this. You also need the subversion and build essentials and you need those two libraries. I'm not going to show you this part because it's a little bit more advanced if you want to run a public server. This will be not part of this video. And I will start with how to get the game. This is done with this line. This is why you need subversion. You're downloading it from a SVN repository, the official one of UFO 2000. I simply copy it into the console. Already switched to my desktop. And the source code will be downloaded into the for the UFL 2000 video, which I will start now. The folder already has been created, and now it's downloading the source code. Well, and it's going on. Had a little hang. Okay, now I have downloaded it, and I'm switching into the folder of the files I just downloaded. No big deal. And in principle, it's really quite easy to compile. You just need to run make. Nothing further. I'm doing this here. And you see the compilation process is running. Depending on your processor, this may take also a few minutes, but usually it's rather fast. You would also have the option to make the same without um, OGG support. You wouldn't be able to play any sound or music files then. I will not show you this here because it's pretty much the same. We will also just compile, but you won't have the ability to play music then. In this case, I will show you parts of the music or the sound. So we keep it. You see it's finished. If we switch into the UFO 2000 video folder, there's this binary. I could also compile the server, but I'll skip this here because I'm only after the game. That's the first part. You now have a compiled UFO 2000. You could probably just start right away, but it is, it's a better game experience if you also have the original files from XCOM. The problem with these XCOM files is they are copyrighted. Same goes for XCOM 2, Terror from the Deep. 
These files are not included in the source files because there's copyright on them. UFO 2000 is under the GPL, it's an open, open source game, so they cannot ship it with the source code. And I'm going to copy those files just into the folder. Inside UFO 2000 you have a terror from the deep folder and you have an XCOM folder. Nothing fancy here, just copy them and you'll be happy. Reason for this is you will have more sounds and more maps and in general the game experience is just better because you have more uh, well more possibilities with the game. Nothing fancy at this point. There's one tiny little um, aspect you will have to keep in mind. I could start it right away, which will work here. But you could also experience an error like this one. If this attempt uh, occurs, then you probably have a problem with the letters in the path name. If you have umlauts or something like that, something unique, uh, where Unicode is required, this error will occur and the game simply ref refuses to start and you will have to move it to another folder or rename the folder and it should start properly. You could now just open it by using this binary, which is quite nice, that's quite okay. But under Ubuntu you also have the means to do a desktop icon. So you won't have to go into this folder, search for it or something like that. You can simply start it from right from desktop and could also dock it into the the sidebar as I have done with my installation here. This is easily done. Just need a text editor and you have to create a block of text like this one. You need this desktop entry line, you need the name of this um, icon. You can name it any way, it doesn't matter. The important part is in exec. This is where your binary is laying, the full path name of this binary. Type as application. The startup notify could be set true. And then you can also set the path, where is the game laying. And you could also set up a icon. So that it looks a little bit more nice. And this I place on my desktop. So now you see it's just a text file for the computer, so you will have to make it executable. Setting the executable bit. One aspect of this uh, icon file is that you can place it in two uh, folders. There are two places where you can place those starting icons. You can place them into your user space in this folder. And you can place them into a more general folder for every user. The problem is that UFO 2000 isn't built for a multi-user system. So you will need writing permissions into the UFO 2000 folder for every user. All settings are the same for every player. If there are some passwords stored, the others will have access to them. So this is not recommended. You better do it into your user space. The game itself also in user space, so others won't have any access. They can compile it themselves. It's not very big. You can see here it's only a few megabytes. A hundred megabytes, that's nothing today. So rather avoid it to make it writable for everyone. Just give everybody the possibility to keep their own UFO 2000. Okay, that's the first part. Now you know how to compile it, you know how to run it. But you can also set it up. This is a part I've already described in the Windows video. I will do this here as well. If you start the game, you will see you have this options dialog. You can set up quite a lot, but not everything. You can set up the language, you can choose which graphics you prefer and so on, but not everything. For example, you don't see the resolution here. You cannot change the screen resolution or if the game is started in full screen, 
or in windowed mode. This you can set up in the configuration file, in this UFO2000INI, which looks like this. This is one of those files every user would have access, so it's recommended to keep it for yourself. You can change the language, you can change also the keyboard layout, you could even have a secondary keyboard layout, which you can switch on the fly inside the game. I never used this, but one could use this. And then here it begins this general part. You can already see here is a with and a hey. Hey, don't confuse this with the screen resolution. This is only the part you can see of the map. Down here you see screen resolution values for X and for Y. This is the actual screen resolution. You could set it to 1024 corresponding to Y. You can add can also change the color depth and above here you only set up which part of the map can be seen. This has nothing to do with the screen resolution. Important difference is screen resolution can screw your starting up. If you choose wrong values here your screen will turn black. You don't see anything. The game won't respond to anything you enter and could be quite a hassle if it is in full screen mode. So just enter values you know work. Your, your hardware supports, then you will be fine. Some parts you see here are also set up to be set up from the graphical user interface. Map aid and width, for example. Other parts you can just enter here. You can, for example, change the music, but at the moment, music isn't played by UFO 2000, so this isn't important. But you could, in principle, set up your own music files here. This part here, where you can choose the fonts and the background graphics, can be set up. This works quite well. You could even choose which type of graphical user interface you want. For example, if you would prefer Windows 95 looks, you just enter them here. One important part is this server part. As I already told you, settings could be considered private. In this case it's very important. You can enter here the server address, how you want to call yourself on the server, and if you are logged in automatically or not. And if I had already connected to a server, that would also be aligned with my password. And this is stored in clear text, in plain text. So everybody who has access to this file could read the password you're using on this particular server. So this is one of the reasons why I say better not use it as multiplayer with writing access for everyone, but everyone should keep its his own um, UFO 2000 installation where these settings and also the password are stored. Down below here you find further settings which usually are set from the game interface. So I wouldn't change anything here. But you could also, for example, set if the game is starting in full screen or not, or if the game is performing a sound check before it starts. And also, if you prefer original XCOM graphics, if you already have played XCOM 1, then you are used to the gaming interface of this particular game, and you could use this interface for you without 2000 itself, but you don't necessarily need it. In principle, you do not need any original files, the game will start without them, but you would only have two maps and uh, only a very few sounds. This is why I copied those original files and so I can also use the graphical user interface of the original game and more sounds. Okay, in principle that's all about the game. Um, if you're interested in how the game is played, you can also watch my next video I will record where I show how this user interface of UFO 2000 is used. And if you want to know more about the game itself, you could also have a look at the UFOpedia. Just google it, you will find it. And thanks for listening to me.